heard the CEO of Salesforce.com, uh, who was at an Apple show, and who said that the iPad or iPad likes will very soon, if it already hasn't, take over computers via the use of cloud. So anything you have in your computer, your hard drive, and all that, how close to reality is that? There are two parts to the answer, and that is one, I would disagree that it will take over for computers. I have a 27-inch iMac, I have a Dell laptop, and a spare screen sitting in my office, and if I'm working on video, doing website development, doing a big report or something like that, I wouldn't try to do it on this. This is meant for portability, not for power. So if you need a powerful computer with a big screen, that's the whole thing. I don't want to look at this little thing all the time if I'm trying to do video, which works best on this screen or two through screens like that. So it will not completely replace them, number one, but it will replace a lot of what you do where you need mobility. If you want to travel, if you don't want to be stuck by a computer, this will do a huge amount of what the average person does. So it will put computers in their place, which is power application. The second topic is about the cloud, and my last newsletter, and the one that's coming out today, talk a lot about the cloud. People say, what's the cloud? Can you explain what that is? And the idea is that most of your information will be stored on a remote computer. Once the Apple Cloud application goes live this fall, it means if I do a word processing document or a spreadsheet or a presentation on here and finish it, it'll automatically be stored on the internet, presumably in their new billion dollar data center in North Carolina. That means if I lose this computer or pick up this and want to check that document, I'll pull it up or from my computer at home I can access it and it will all be backed up as well. I don't have to worry about losing files and things like that. That's the direction everything's going. There are some concerns which I have and I wrote those in the last newsletter. Um, what happens with if your cloud provider, you know, if you take your business and you say, I'm going to let somebody else someplace that I don't even know all that well, like Amazon, they're big in this, let them take over my computing. Hey, I don't have to have an IT person. I don't have to have an IT department and run my own computer. Somebody else is going to do it for me. Well, some people would say, I'm not sure I want that much control of such an important thing as information technology outside of my corporation. So there's, there's a ton of concerns about it. There is no doubt things are going that way so fast. You can't believe it, but it's not a clear cut how it'll all turn out. Other questions? Yeah, over here. Uh, yeah, you, you mentioned uh, uh, that this is an iPad. You've got an iPhone. You've talked about it, uh, Android. You've talked about other tablets. Are those all interconnecting together as well, or do you need to have you know, the iPhone, iPad combination, the Android, something else combination, do they all interconnect? No, they don't interconnect very well. And so Apple, in this regard, has a big leg up because you've got three products, desktop, or actually four, counting an iPod, desktop, iPhone, iPad, iPod, that all work seamlessly together. If you bought an, iPhone, an Android device into that mix, and if you owned an app on here and got an Android tablet, you'd have to buy the app over again, number one. Number two, it's probably not going to work exactly the same as this one because the two operating systems are different. So this whole compatibility thing is an issue. People say, well, I want an Android phone because it has some features that the iPhone don't have. It doesn't have, and that's absolutely true. But then the minute that person walks out and says, I want a tablet, the tablet that they buy, may, even if it's another Android tablet, may have been built by a different company, will have a different version of the operating system, different buttons on the screen, different size screen, different apps. And so there was not even compatibility amongst Android devices. So that's the thing to think about in, in the long run. Two big competitors today in technology are Google and Apple. And if, if you want to see one evidence of that, if you check out, check out the Google TV and the Apple TV, they both want to get into your living room as fast as they can and take over your TV experience. And if you want to see how this is going to change or experiment with it, put in a, something like the Apple TV, again, much simpler than the whole Google system. But you slap an Apple TV in by your computer, I can sit at my kitchen table call up music from my computer downstairs, 
which will go onto the TV and pull up a slideshow and do it all wirelessly through a device like that. Google has something comparable, and you can call up TV channels, you can call up podcasts, you can call up Netflix, all through this combination of wireless devices, and Google and Apple are in there just trying to tear each other to pieces to see who's going to win. But obviously, there's Google has been in the cloud forever. That's where all the searches are done. That's where your Google Docs are stored. So they got into it early. And the question is, who are the companies who are going to provide the services, the cloud services? Google is one that does it. Uh, Apple's going to be doing more along the consumer line. Um, Amazon is huge. You can say, I want Amazon to take over some of my business practices, some of my business software, they'll run it for you. And then you say, this weekend I'm having a big promotion. I expect a million people to visit my site and order products for me because I'm promoting it on, a nation, on, on the Super Bowl. And so you can say uh, uh, to Amazon, I'd like 200% more ser uh, servers available. They say, okay. You pay them a couple thousand dollars, the weekend's over, they turn it back off. Amazon is just huge at this point, but Google is going to be fighting all the way down. I don't, can't give any specifics. Gary, I've got a question uh, that I think relates to just about everybody in here. <clears throat> Many of us are, are small business owners, entrepreneurs and whatnot. Uh, I spend hours and hours uh, doing research on demographics and, and that sort of thing for business. Uh, I would presume that there are plenty of different types of apps that give that sort of research information? Yeah, the question about apps for research, well, if there's an app that works, fine. If there isn't, you pull up your browser and do the same kind of thing that you would there. The third thing is, log on to some service, log on to your PC from here and do the research if you're not at your PC. Now, that connection is slower, so I wouldn't do that very regularly, but again, this is a computer and somebody's, you know, 500,000 apps out there. Uh, finding them is the hard part. Corporations have their whole IT departments now shifting over. They're not writing software for terminals to get into their computer. They're writing apps up there for their own distribution. So um, if something like that's not available today, it's going to be available tomorrow. Thank you all very much. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you.